Hi there, are you ready to hear more exciting adventures about Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends written by Christopher Audrey? These tales were taken from the book Thomas and His Friends. I'm going to hear everyone's favourite number one engine in his story called Thomas and the Swan. Thomas and Gordon were at the big station where Gordon had just backed down to take the express. Hello Gordon, said the voice, remember us? Gordon was late and not in the mood for guessing games, but he thought he recognised the voice. Pip, he ventured carefully, or is it Emma? It's me, Philippa laughed. Well done, Emma is at the back today. Why are you here? asked Thomas. The question was answered at once as the fat controller arrived. Philippa and Emma, the fat controller began importantly. Could be very helpful, shall my way away. Yes, sir, agreed Gordon, though he wasn't sure why. Too much time, the fat controller went on, is wasted by changing the engine of the express at the other way away. Our timetable is too slow. Suddenly, Gordon realised what the fat controller meant. And if Pip and Emma were the express instead of me pulling it, there wouldn't be a changeover? Exactly, agreed the fat controller. Well done, Gordon. After that, the fat controller often saw Pip and Emma at the big station. You're doing well, he would say kindly. I am very pleased. My plan is working. One day, Thomas was at the junction when, with a cheerful, Good morning, Pip and Emma hurried by. Moments later, with a rattle and a roar, they were gone. They were a great success, remarked Thomas's driver, and Gordon loves it. He says he can now do two trips a day instead of one. A little later, Thomas set off along the branch line with Annie and Clarabelle, following cheerfully behind. Today, there was an inspector on Thomas's footplate, so the small space was quite crowded. The inspector was assessing Thomas's fireman for possible promotion. They stopped at the station by the river for Thomas to take on water. While they waited, Thomas saw something white on the rails in front. What's that? he asked. Just an old newspaper, I expect, said his driver. Come on. Just then, Thomas saw a white neck uncurl and a yellow beak appear. Stop! he called. It's not a newspaper! Quickly, the driver braked and the inspector got down. He went to look and then returned to the cab. It's a swan, the inspector told Thomas's driver. It must have flown into the parpit of the bridge by mistake. Can you come and help, please? Thomas watched anxiously as the two men lifted the bird. It tried to flap his wings, but only one moved. carefully the inspector and the driver carried the injured swan past Thomas. They placed it gently in the corner of a cab and the inspector covered it with his coat. Off we go Thomas, said his driver. Be as gentle as you can. The fireman had told the signalman at the river station what had happened so they had a clear run to the top station. When they got there, the inspector took the swan in his car to the nearby vet. The vet reset the broken wing and kept the bird in his surgery garden until it was strong enough to fly. Then he went with Thomas to the river to let the swan go free. Word of Thomas' rescue spread fast and soon all the engines had heard about it. Pip and Emma congratulated him 
when they saw him at the big station, and so did the fat controller. Gordon, too, was very proud. Just think, said Pip, if it had been us at the express, we wouldn't have been able to stop. And now we can add injured birds to our list of passengers, said Thomas proudly.